Question number nine, Dr David Clark. Thank you. My question is to the Minister. Did his predecessor, the Honourable Tim Grocer, ask MFAT officials negotiating the TPP agreement to preserve the right for a future New Zealand government to ban the purchase of residential land by non-resident foreign speculators? Mr Speaker. Oh, the Honourable Paul Goldsmith. On behalf of the Minister, no. He asked them to preserve the right for a future New Zealand government to restrict the purchase of residential land by non-resident uh, foreigners, which I might add was one of Labour's bottom lines. Not, not right. Uh, supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr David Clark. Why did Australia reserve the right to ban non-resident foreign speculators from its housing market, and why didn't he do the same? The Honourable Paul Goldsmith. Mr Speaker, on behalf of uh, the Minister, other countries have negotiated uh, based on their own domestic policy positions, which I have no responsibility for. The government has no policy to outright ban foreigners investing in New Zealand, but TPP maintains our current approval requirements for foreign investments in sensitive land. And as I said in my primary response, the government has preserved the right for future governments to restrict the purchase of residential land by non-resident foreigners. Supplementary. Order. Supplement. Order. Supplementary question, Dr David Clark. Why did New Zealand agree to Singapore reserving the right to impose a ban on the purchase of housing by foreign speculators when Singapore didn't already have a ban? The Honourable Paul Goldsmith. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister, I don't have those details to hand, but what I can say is uh, this government has, uh, in the interest of all New Zealanders, preserved the right of the government to restrict the purchase of resident land, and that's a good deal for all New Zealanders. Point of order, um, Dr to David Clark. To assist the order of the House, I seek leave to table a document stating that Singapore order, reserves the right the to adopt the docu- any measure order. affecting I real need estate. The source of the document, the date. It is the relevant annex in the many thousand order, dollar page. Order. Sir, the member is now trifling with the chair. If it's been tabled in the House, it's available to all members. Order. It creates disorder when members then seek for political purposes to table something that's already freely available to all members of the House. That information was tabled uh, at the beginning of last week. It is available, and to seek to uh, table it again only creates disorder. I won't put up with it. Point of order, Doctor. Uh, Not yet. Happened? Maybe one day, uh, Mr. Okay. Speaker. The, the point of order that I want to raise to you is: I think the document in question is the document there, all of the many thousands of pages of it. And I think that the question becomes: where, uh, where such a large volume of information is available, and where there is a contested debate about a particular part of it, that isn't necessarily going to be available order. to all members in a, in a readily accessible order. form. If it's order, I don't need any assistance at all. I can see the document from here to suggest that it's unavailable to members once it's been tabled in this House is not fact. It is available. The question the member might legitimately ask is whether members have an interest to go and look at it. That becomes the member's business but the information is already tabled in this House, it's already available. And to seek to retable it is simply using the point of tabling documents for a political purpose. That's not what they are designed for. Does the member have a further supplementary? Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr David Clark. Does he accept that Singapore could, quote, adopt any measure affecting real estate? The Honourable Paul Goldsmith. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister, again, I don't have those details to hand, but I'm focused on uh, New, Zealand's, uh, New Zealand's focus, which is to make sure that we have the ability to restrict uh, the purchase of residential land by non-resident foreigners. And uh, I might add that that was one of the bottom lines uh, of the Labour Party. Point of order, Chris. I think we've just had an illustration, Mr Speaker, of the difficulty of having very large documents tabled in the House. If a minister can say they don't have the information available, and you have said that the information is available, how can it be an acceptable answer but not acceptable to table I'll the material? The hon- Honourable Jerry Brown. Uh, Mr Speaker, the question was uh, asking the minister, could he confirm something that is uh, the, the, uh, about the particular st- uh, ability of Singapore to do something? That answer will not be contained in that document at all. The statement about what Singapore have reserved is in the document, quite a different matter. 
I, I don't think the point raised by Chris Hipkins adds to the discussion in any way whatsoever. The Minister was asked uh, some information about another country entirely. I would prefer him to stand and say he doesn't have that information than attempt to answer and end up giving an answer that he has to come back um, and um, look at. The fact the information has been available, uh, the further tabling of it wouldn't assist in that answer in any way whatsoever. Does the member have a further supplementary? Can I speak to the point of order, sir? No, I've dealt right with it. I've okay. ruled it's on Further it. supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr David Clark. Does the minister believe that a competent minister of trade would know whether the Singaporeans have reserved for themselves the right to ban New Zealanders from purchasing residential land? The Honourable Paul Goldsmith. Mr Speaker, what I believe is a competent uh, spokesman on trade would believe in trade. Question. Oh, further supplementaries? Supplementary. Order. 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 Supplementary question, Dr David Clark. What does it say about his government when they use the opportunity for this parliament to question them about a trade deal to demean opponents refuse to answer straight questions with straight answers and chuckle in glee at honest discussions about this serious issue. The Honourable Paul Goldsmith. On behalf of the, of the Minister, this government welcomes a wide-ranging discussion on the TPP and that's what we'll be doing over the rest of this year and we believe this is a great deal for this country and that's why we're supporting it. Order. Question. Question. Order. Order, order, su order. Supplementary question, Joanne Hayes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the Minister, can the Minister confirm whether the Trans Pacific Partnership meets essential bottom line requirements to protect New Zealand's interests? Uh, the Honourable Paul Goldsmith. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the Minister, I can confirm that the TPP meets all five bottom lines set out publicly by at least one organisation. They include that Pharmac must be protected, we can tick that one, that corporations cannot successfully sue the government for regulating in the public interest, tick, that the New Zealand maintains the right to restrict sales of farmland and housing to non resident buyers, tick, and that the Treaty of Waitangi must be upheld, tick and that meaningful gains are made for our farmers in tariff reductions and market access. We can tick that one too. So, uh, that, so the TPP meets every one of the bottom lines set out by the Labour Party. Order. Supplementary. Supplementary. So, order. Supplement, supplementary question, Dr David Clark. Has the Minister seen reports from 2013 when Labour announced its policy on banning non-resident foreign buyers and subsequent reports when it introduced its bottom lines that clearly indicate the intention was to ban non-resident foreign speculators with that policy. The Honourable Paul Goldsmith. Well, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister, I'm not responsible for Labour policy, but what I can say <laughs> is that Labour policy was to restrict and that is what this government has set out to do. Question number 10, 